Another show was Cat's Paw. Right. Once again, uh, I took off from uh, what's the essential uh, musical quality of a cat or a cat's paw? Well, uh, the clarinet, and Prokofiev thought so too in Peter and the Wolf. And also a cat going boom, boom, boom. If you could put sound to a cat's footfall, it would be a clarinet. Uh, so I wrote that for like five clarinets. You know, my theory is if one is good, another, you know, the exaggeration of it will make the point even more. And I did that with those five baritone saxophones, the five oboes in the Kubrick movie. Um, and once again, there were five clarinets, I think, in uh, Cat's Paw. Why, why five of an instrument? I suppose, why five? You, when you spell out a chord, uh, especially uh, with a jazz background, which most of us composers have, you know, of this my generation and on. Uh, uh, the jazz chord, sort of a five is the minimum for a jazz chord. You know, a, a four-note chord is the basis of the 19th century harmonies. Uh, jazz chords, you go into five. Probably that was my thinking. Probably, I didn't even think about it. I probably said, well, no, 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 we need another four, no, we need another one here. It probably is automatic like that. Okay, going back to Cat's Paw. Oh, I, I just remember making it as catty a sound as possible, and I thought clarinets would do it well. And once again, I got no uh, unfavorable comments, so I guess they agreed with me. In much time. Um, oh, okay. Um, it was a, a right. Uh, Spock, Mr. Spock had to go back to Vulcan to mate. And he lost control of himself because every nine years or whatever it was, he goes into a, a mating spasm, and he had to go back. He, he had no control. Uh, and once he was on the uh, planet, there was a, a fight he had to go through, a ritual fight. There was a processional. There was uh, uh, the queen, uh, what's her name? Uh, Tupau was her name, played by Celia Lovsky. And she was a grand dame, and she was forbidding and austere. <laughs> and I wrote the most austere process processional music I could think of. Once again, a lot of percussion and a lot of um, uh, a rigid theme, like a, a fanfare theme. And I wanted to make it as formal and scary as I could think to make it. And that was the, the basis of that theme, the amok time theme. Did you do any underlying things for Spock himself? Yes, as a matter of fact. Well, let me just uh, tell a, an aside story. I started to get uh, royalty checks from The Simpsons. I didn't write any music for The Simpsons. What they did was that uh, when Bart Simpson would get angry and cross the living room or something like that, they quoted the music from a muck time. Oh, did you know that? <laughs> I didn't know. Anyways, then, bum, 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 Anyway, um, what did you ask me about? Uh, oh, uh, an underlying theme for Spot. Oh, yes, for Mrs. Spot, yes. Once again, uh, I tried to be, uh, use my dramatic chops as well as my music chops. What is the essence of Spock's character? He's not quite human, but yet there's occasionally a human quality to him. So what if I wrote a kind of a, a fairly tender theme, but give it to an instrument that could not possibly pay, play romantically and tenderly, a bass guitar? Now, bass guitar uh, is not a, not a string bass, but you know, uh, just a big bass guitar, and it clunks. You play it. You cannot play beautifully and romantically on that instrument. And yet, I said to, to the player, uh, I think it was Bob Bain, play as beautifully as you can. The hoping to set up a tension that it is Mr. Spock's tension, you know, kind of a wish for him to be human, but he just doesn't have the emotional capacity. So that was his theme. They liked it. They kept on using that. For, even when I didn't do the music, they had that theme for Mr. Spock, I'm told. Were there other pieces like that, that were of yours that were replayed in other episodes? Yes. Uh, another one of uh, Kirk's wishes in Shirley was to get united with Ruth, his college sweetheart, and he does so. And there was a flute solo that I wrote, kind of a romantic you know, flute solo. Uh, from then on, for the rest of the Star Trek series, every time Kirk had a romantic thought, I would hear that flute. <laughs> Another episode was the, the Paradise Syndrome. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
it, it seemed uh, that was, yeah, I did some research on that. I think I used Polynesian themes or Native American themes or, or a combination. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that was a take on the, you know, everybody considers Tahiti and the, uh, the uh, Polynesian Isles as, as close to paradise as we get on this earth. You know, nobody goes hungry there. If you're hungry, you reach up to a tree and pull down a piece of fruit. Uh, you don't wear clothes. You don't have heaters. It's paradise. So I think that's why I, I, I did the music. I said it and with a Polynesian you know, kind of feel to it. You know, not, not, not a nightclub kind of thing you know, with a, a ukulele, but a native instruments. Once again, I, I did you know, the kind of uh, the drum and research instruments, I think, probably some Polynesian flutes.